Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson. Today I'm very happy to have you here with me. I am going to explain one of the important things uh, to keep in mind when it comes to creating any types of workflows in N8N, which is the error. So how do we handle errors in N8N? Because it's crucial for you to know when there's an error because some of these uh, automations might be making you thousands and thousands of dollars for them to be inactive or uh, stopped working without you even knowing, it's, uh, it's very hard. Uh, so we'll need to set up a proper workflow for errors in order for us to know what is happening. And in order to do that, it's quite different than make.com. If you come from make.com, uh, you'd know that uh, right clicking on any node and adding an error handler is how you do it, right? You can uh, you can ignore you can uh, you, you you can do a lot of other uh, others as well. You can uh, uh, let's delete this. You can so you can break uh, and try again. So there's a lot of things to do when it comes to in make.com errors in make.com. But in uh, in N eight N it's quite different. So let's uh, let's delve deep. Uh, before I start, before I start, I want to just point your attention to uh, all of the workflows that I do, including this one today, will be part of the workflows that I have as a bundle at a reduced price on my store. So please check that out. You can download it, you can import it easily uh, with uh, if you create a new workflow from here and you click on these three dots and you can import from file, okay? Uh, then you can have the workflow ready for you. So there's a lot of workflows here. Uh, you can uh, resell them, you can use them to your own purposes, do whatever you want. Uh, and also I have another course for N8 and for beginners, just if, you, if you're transitioning from make.com or if you want to get, your, get a refresher or starting out, I think this course will be great for you to start. Okay, I'll leave the link in the description below for you to check it out. So now we're in, the, in this new workflow. What we need to do and to grasp is that in N8N, uh, it's not like make.com. So in N8N, you have to make a workflow for errors. Yes, a specific workflow for error. So what you need to do is click on this ad and uh, say error. And here we have an error trigger with this bug uh, icon. Once you click on it, there's nothing here to do, okay? Uh, so this error trigger, what it does is that uh, this triggers whenever there is an error, right? Uh, so this is a separate workflow and this, is, th this has the lightning bolt. So what this means is that this is a trigger, so it can be triggered with, uh, from another, from an external workflow, okay? So what, what do we need to do? So now that we have this, uh, uh, this trigger, we can, uh, we can test, okay? Then what we need to do after that, we need to do something with it, right? So we need to, we now know that there's an error, okay? But what we need to do is, uh, how, do we, how do we know that there's an error? So we can either send it per email, right? You can send an email, and then inside here, <clears throat> See the error triggers uh, values here, right? You can say, it's a text, let's say it's a text, and let's say uh, there was an error. And then you would say uh, workflow name, and then you drag the workflow name, okay? And then you would say, uh, for example, the error, what is the error message, right? And then you would bring this here. And then what we could do also, uh, I think that would be enough. We can, we can do date if we want, but uh, it would be the date of the email, so no need for that. Uh, so that's all we need to do, like this, uh, Whenever an error happens, send me an email. Tell me what, which, which workflow, and what was the error. 
So uh, once we have that hooked up, we can save uh, and Okay, uh, so we can save this workflow and then we're basically done. Okay, now you can you can use, use an email, you can send a Discord message, for example, you can send a Slack message, for example, choose whatever you want, how you want to be notified, what is the best way to reach you, okay? And then once we set, set that up, that's it we need to do from here. What we need to do is just name it error workflow or whatever you want. Okay, and then we go back. And here we can, for example, go to uh, any of these workflows. And what we need to do is we need to tell this workflow that if there's an error, go and trigger the other workflow. And to do that, we only need to go to the settings and go to the error, uh, like error workflow here. And now you say now you see there's no workflow. That means if there's an error in this workflow, there's nothing no, nothing will be done, right? Uh, the the uh, it will trigger an error and it will stop. And this is really uh, dangerous if you are running a business. So you need to have this workflow uh, there. So you can choose the error workflow that you have and you say save. Okay. Now that this is saved, now you know that. If this is if there's an error in this and it's triggered, uh, the other workflow will be triggered and the email will be sent with all the details that you need. Okay. Now you need to do this on every new workflow that you create. Make sure that you have the error in the settings. You have the error workflow uh, set up. Okay, error workflow. So another thing we need to keep in mind when it comes to errors is that it's per node. Okay. Uh, let's say, for example, let's, uh, let's go back to our error workflow, for example. Okay, so let's create an HTTP request node because usually these nodes are, they trigger a lot of errors, timeout and what, whatsoever. So what we could do is... Uh, in, in, we could we could set up a workflow that uh, or like if we if we if we have an a conditional for example like this is a very specific situation right and if we know if we want to say that if this is false trigger an error okay and to do that we can do uh, this note and this is what I wanted to explain okay uh, so there is this note called stop an error what this note is. Uh, it will stop the workflow and it will trigger an error. And this could be useful in situations where you want certain data to be present before you continue. And you cannot continue before that data. And if that data is not there, it will ruin all the workflow. Then you could say, okay, check if this data is there. Great, continue. If this data is not there, trigger an error. And the error message, you could, you could, uh, you could specify the message. Uh, we didn't have our data was not present, for example. And then when when this is gets triggered, as you know what gets triggered, right? The other workflow gets triggered with the exactly with the message that you sent here. Okay, so this is you creating the error because you need certain data to be there, and it's not okay to continue the workflow if if that data that is uh, uh, crucial. Uh, for you to for for the for your workflow to function properly, if that data is there is not there, uh, always trigger this uh, trigger trigger an error, stop the workflow, trigger an error, and let me know, right? And if we don't have a workflow an error workflow set, we wouldn't know. So this has to be tied up with the with the workflow uh, with the error workflow that you have to create before, okay? One more thing I want to touch on is the inside the node itself. So if you go to the uh, node itself and you go to settings, now here here we have the retry on fail, right? Retry on fail. So if you remember inside of make, there's this break uh, handler that you can specify how many times to retry if it doesn't work, okay? Inside of and it's inside of the uh, node itself. 
uh, you go to the settings on any node so there's something called retry and error and then you tell it how many times you need to retry so you tell it for camera try three times and each time uh, wait three seconds between each time okay and if all fails what you need to do is you can either continue ignore that there's an error okay continue and prompt an, uh, the error or just stop the workflow okay so uh, so these these are the options that you have uh, so to recap three three main parts okay uh, first of all create an error workflow it's, it is essential that you create an error workflow and set it in all your workflows if there is something you'd get notified is either via email via message or via whatever whatever way to get to to reach you second thing is if you want to uh, to trigger an error in certain situations that certain data are crucial for you uh, you can create this stop and error node that's two the third part is that in every node there is retry and fail and uh, especially for timeout requests or for certain uh, nodes uh, you can specify how many times you need to try okay and that solves a lot of the errors that you get all right, so that was uh, error handling inside of NNN and eight, and hopefully uh, it was uh, beneficial to you guys. If you did like it, give it a like. Subscribe below for more videos, and I'll put the link in the description below so you can so you can check them out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.